Okay, welcome. We're going to do a pendulum problem. We're going to have a pendulum that's being held at a certain height, h. It's going to have an l length of the string, and it's going to fall down vertical in at that l with an angle theta. Now, let's make theta 35 degrees and the length 1.0 meters. Now, we're going to need to find the height that that bob falls because we're going to use the law of conservation of energy. And that pendulum bob is not following a length L, it's following an arc. And that arc has a height, and I'm going to call it H. And to determine that H, we're going to do is take H is equal to the length minus the length cosine theta because what we have here is a triangle and if we know this length right here and subtract it from L we can get H. So this particular length is going to be 1.0 meters minus 1.0 meters cosine 35 degrees and that's going to equal to 0 0.181 meters. So the pendulum bob is going to fall that length. Well, with that information, we can now use the law of conservation of energy where the potential energy initial, Bob being held up at the top, right in this end, is plus the kinetic energy initial, which is zero because it's not in motion, so let's call that zero, is equal to the potential energy at the bottom, which is final, and there's no height change, that also will be zero. But that is also added to the kinetic energy final. So in other words, the potential energy at the very top, mgh, is equal to one-half mass times the velocity final squared. That final velocity is the velocity of the bob at the bottom. So mass will cancel, and what we're going to have is the final velocity is equal to 2gh square root. Well, let's determine that velocity. So that's going to be 2 times the negative 9.80 meters per second squared for gravity, since it's downward negative. The height, I'm going to make it negative also because it's a downward fall, so it's going to be negative 0 0.181 meters. Let's square root the whole thing. And what we're going to determine is that it's going to have a final velocity of 188 meters per second. So that bob is going to be falling or having a horizontal velocity. See, this is now going to be the horizontal velocity because if I were to cut that bob off, it will have a 1.88 meter per second squared horizontal velocity. Well, that becomes kind of cool because let's say we have a delta y, a height, let's call it delta y equals uh, negative 12 meters. Let's say this is going to drop 12 meters. If we were to cut that bob and see where it falls off. So um, let me move this stuff out of the way. Let's do that again. I had a little bit of a problem. There we go. Let's just move this out of the way. I'll bring it over here to the corner. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's say now we're going to cut the pendulum bob right here at the bottom. So let's return that bob back to where it belongs here at the bottom. And it's going to cut off and we're going to see where it's going to where it's going to fall on the ground if it were a distance of 12 or it's, I'm going to say negative 12 meters because it's a downward fall. So negative 12 meters or just 12 meters fall. Okay, so it's going to fall 12 meters to the ground. So what is, where is it going to land right here? What delta x, what change in x will it take place? Well, let's start with, we're going to need the time that that bob will fall once it cuts off. So since we know that y final equals y initial, so this is a kinematic equation, so the y initial times time plus one half gt squared, well, the initial velocity at the top is zero in the y direction. What we're talking about is the horizontal velocity 
is going to give us where it's going to fall on the ground. But at the top, it is zero. So a little rearrangement in the y direction, what we're going to have is t equals 2 delta y over g square root. Well, let's plug in some values. So it's 2 times negative 12 meters divided by negative 9.80 meters per second squared for our gravitational acceleration. And what we're going to have is a time of 1.56 seconds. So it's going to take 1.56 seconds for this pendulum bob to fall uh, due to that swing. So again, let's move this out of the way like we did before. Now that we have the time, we have the velocity. Let's see if we can determine the how far it will land. Well, if we use kinematic equation again for the x direction, what we will have is x final equals x initial plus yx times time. And remember, in the x direction, the initial and final uh, velocity and projectile motion is always the same velocity. So vx is the same plus one half a t squared. Well, since vx in the initial and vx final are the same, this is zero. So delta x is going to equal to vx t. Well, let's just plug in our values. We have 1.88 meters per second times our time of 1.56 seconds. Okay, and once we plug that in, and now, remember, we have two sig figs, so I'm going to put this answer in the correct two sigs, fig, sig figs, and so it's going to be 2.9 meters. So our answer for this problem is it's going to travel a distance of 2.9 meters in the horizontal direction and land on the ground 2.9 meters. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Enjoy doing physics. Bye.